Hey, it's Derek Jordan. Welcome to the World Fusion Show, where we bring you the leading innovators in World Fusion music. Today we're doing part two of our celebration of Milford Graves. Milford was known primarily as a drummer, but he was so much more than that. He was an herbalist, acupuncturist, uh, martial artist, teacher, scholar, and he touched people so deeply in his life. And this is a way for me to share and for people to share their feelings about my mentor, Milford Graves. But you must become the drum yourself first. What I what I mean is that your body yeah. has to be moving mm. you see your whole body is when you hit the drum it just can't be you hit and your body is not moving like the drum skin moves mm. you have to, your whole body has to move with the drum skin mm. in other words when i was from early age how to play a drum mm. especially in african drumming it is unheard of that a drummer is not a dancer. Mm. A drummer who cannot dance is not considered a good drummer. Mm. I think the problem today is that a lot of the music, commercial music that we hear, and the way music are taught and a lot of the music schools, people are making it to the rhythms and the sounds too far away from our natural sounds and our natural rhythms. So people are hearing like, a lot of sounds and rhythms that is not natural for us, just like a lot of air is polluted. We smell polluted air. We drink polluted water. You know, a lot of sounds are like this now. They're not pure enough. So we're hurting ourselves and people have forgotten this here. Hi, my name is Ben Holm from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I met Milford Graves um, my second year at Bennington, uh, I had found out about that he taught at Bennington and I assumed that it was a place uh, where I should go because any place that would allow him to teach there must be an amazing generative place. And so I find myself there. Milford has gone my first year for Guggenheim. Um, he's on sabbatical. And so I get back and I say, yeah, man, I've been waiting. And then he says, well, okay, like, you know, privates are going to be here. This is how we're going to do it. And so I go into the classroom and I start to play some, he says, stop, stop, stop. Okay, I start it again. No, 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 stop, man, you gotta stop. Okay, what would you like me to do? And so I start a third thing and he says, stop it. And he says, what are you trying to communicate and who are you trying to communicate with? And that was more or less the entirety of our relationship encapsulated uh, from the beginning to the end. It's like, who are the people that you're really trying to be in conversation with? And I think about that a lot now, even as I do different kinds of work, that there is this opportunity to actually connect with people and that we are using tools of communication, whether it's what Milford would say, would say, like, look, man, like you got to look at your set, man. Like, who do you hang out with? How do you present your body? What does your clothing mean? How do you speak? And that's something that I constantly think about in academic settings and professional settings and every other ses setting is the way that we can use communication to build
bridges and to really present ourselves in this world. My name is Arthur Brooks. I live in the snowy mountains of Lincoln, Vermont. I met him in the spring of 1973 when Bill Dixon gave a festival of, uh, of new music, new black music. Uh, it was a precursor to the forming of the black music division at Bennington College. And we met Milford, heard Milford, and were just simply blown away as is and everyone is who've, who's heard him. While I was there at Bennington, as I mentioned, I was there for 23 years. I uh, took the first few years, every class that Milford presented because I was so intrigued by what he had to say and what he had to offer. But Milford was a complete person. He, he, he came with the um, philosophy and spirituality of, of the music, its, its derivation, its, its connection to African music and African drumming and spirits. And included in that was uh, being in physical shape. I recall jogging with Milford around Jennings and back in the, down, the, down to North Bennington and back up through the back gate there behind Jennings and we're jogging, I'm huffing and puffing. And all of a sudden he turns around and starts running backwards. I said, what? <laughs> He said, oh, yes, oh, yes, Arthur, Arthur, yes, yes, you have, you have to tune in all your muscles, all your muscles. I said, okay, okay. So we're running, we're running backwards up the hill for 100 yards or so, and then back. That was an, another aspect of Milford's that, that impressed me. Anyway, um, Milford's gone now, but I'd like to think that he played himself to the other plane that in his sensitivity to uh, what the body's rhythms were and uh, playing them, he actually played himself alive. I'd like to think he played himself to the other side too. So Milford, wherever you are, I hope you can hear us. Bless you, my man. Uh, we are uh, with my old friend, Lee Edelberg, who um, I went to Bennington College with, and we studied at Bennington with Milford. Um, and then after we graduated in 77, we lived in the Lower East Side of New York, and we used to go out to see Milford um, uh, at his house in Jamaica, Queens, and studied martial arts with him, which basically meant that we would uh, spar with him and he would beat the crap out of us um, once a week. And it was just, you know, we would drag ourselves home on the, on the subway, <laughs> all bruised and battered. Anyway, and then go back and then recover for a week and come back. Anyway, Lee, so great to have you. Wanted you to share some of your insights and, and feelings about your work with Milford. Yeah, uh, thanks. First, uh, thanks very much for inviting me, Derek, uh, to be on your show. I really appreciate that, okay? Yeah. Um, well, you know, his loss, I mean, his passing was a, was a, was a huge deal. Um, and I hadn't seen Milford for probably 10 years personally. But it brought up, it's brought up a lot of stuff. I've been thinking a, a lot about um, my relationship with him and people around him, uh, such as yourself. You know, um, yeah, we used to get beat up. And I remember, uh, you know, um, medicine uh, was part of that, right? We had to learn how to treat our bruises and take care of ourselves. That was part of the training. And as, as you said at the time, uh, man, he gets, we pay him to beat us up. What kind of gig is that? That's a great gig, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, my first impression, first started studying with him was uh, he has such an uh, unbelievable wide range of interests. Uh, and he introduced me to all kinds of things that have, have basically I realize now I internalized a lot of those concepts back from Bennington College. Um, you know, he introduced us obviously to uh, world music in a big way and uh, uh, traditional Chinese medicine, five element theory, which I didn't know anything about, uh, herbology, herbalism. Wild you know, native plants, wild plants, which I had never paid any much attention to. Um, martial arts, which was completely foreign to me. I mean, as a participant, it was not not something I was interested in at all. Um, you know, Egyptian weird stuff like Egyptian mathematics, and I don't know, you name it, all kinds of strange things, right? Uh, you know, different uh, musical temperaments for the keyboard. I mean, it was really, and a lot of that stuff I've internalized. Uh, one of the biggest ideas for me was the idea that. Um, 
music is actually, a, a, to a certain extent, a reflection of human physiological processes. And that was a big one. Uh, that, that has left a big impression on me all this time. Um, so uh, it, it, he just, th- the other feature of all this stuff was that he wasn't just someone who was an academic. He was actually actively working with and, um, you know, researching this stuff. I mean, he was trying it out on himself. He was trying it out on his friends and his students. And so there was a real hands-on uh, practical aspect to everything, which was very exciting as a young, you know, young man, college student. It was kind of unbelievable, actually. I couldn't wait to get to New York and study privately where he didn't have to hold back because of the you know, restrictions of teaching at a college. My name is Jared Shapiro. I met Milford Graves in 1974. And uh, I guess probably the second time um, we met um, in 1974, we started doing botany work together. So I spent a lot of time in uh, the beautiful mountains of Vermont. Perhaps they offer a perspective on our revered mentor um, that other people may not be uh, uh, providing. So Milford would have been uh, 34 and I was about 19. And we had uh, gone out in the spring and uh, collected a lot of Allium trichocum, which is wild leek. And uh, many people know wild leek or wild ramp as a very extremely pungent um, spring um, culinary finding in the woods. And um, so... Um, because Milford never did things in half steps, we had collected an enormous quantity of wild leeks. Like every time I thought we were done, he, uh, we would collect more. And in the end, he had many, many large plastic bags full of wild leeks. So, um, anyway, the next day I picked him up to bring him to the bus station and, um, when he got in the car with shopping bags that had these bags of wild leeks, um, the off-gassing was just, um, it was epic. I mean, I had to open the windows of my car. And it's not that it was like the smell of cut onions or something. It was more like the smell of um, industrial zone of New Jersey. There was some sort of severe (laughs) smell. And so I was laughing the whole way we went to the bus station. We got to the bus station and there was a really long queue of people um, going down to New York. And so um, Milford got on the bus and the next day he called me and I said, well, um, and by the way, how was your trip? I saw there were a lot of people. And this was in the day when people would smoke on the bus and a lot of people on the bus was not a not a very pleasant thing. And he said, oh, it was, um, it was really fine. Um, I had the whole back of the bus to myself. Everyone was jammed in the front and people were constantly looking over their shoulders <laughs> to the back of the bus. People could not have understood what that smell was. Uh, my name's Aran Alicia. Uh, I'm a musician, uh, a percussionist, uh, an improviser, composer, and uh, I was a student of uh, Milford Graves at Bennington College between 1984 and 1988 and uh, maintained uh, a a very close uh, relationship um, with uh, Milford throughout the 1990s and certainly uh, over the last uh, 20 years to now. My one of the deepest moments for me involved a moment uh, uh, somewhere in the middle of my time at Bennington where I was trying to uh, uh, master a series of uh, polyrhythms building independence of the four limbs. And uh, he gave me a couple of, of, of extra challenges to do this that were very, very, very difficult. That of course he could do masterfully, but to bring that out uh, um, 
I thought would be impossible. Of course, if you think about it too much, it's not going to happen. If you count it, forget it. His whole idea was you, you've got to you've got to just feel it. All right, you've got to just relax to the point where it becomes a story you're telling, where it becomes just a sound, just a, a, a series of vibrations that somehow you can uh, uh, sense and you can transmit uh, from yourself to the air, um, if you will. And um, I, I was having a bit of a hard time getting to that moment with the last thing I had to do. So he comes behind me and he starts putting his fingers on my temple and he's actually, with his four fingers, he's actually tapping out the polyrhythm that he, uh, that I was working on. And uh, after a while, I felt, you know, I felt more relaxed and I felt, okay, I, can, I think I can do this, but not entirely, but I thought, let's give it a shot. Uh, so about five minutes later, I'm like, okay, listen, I'm going to try this now. I'm going to try to play all four beats right now. I've, I, I, I have two or three, but I'm going to try to do all of them. Milford starts laughing and he goes, what are you talking about? You're, you're playing it, man. You've been playing it for the last five minutes. It was one of the most you know, mo greatest moments of elation and transcendence uh, that I've ever had as, as, as a musician, uh, as a human being. Right. Just feeling that freedom and just realizing I felt this as a story. I felt this as a feeling. I felt this as a sensation. I felt this as an essence. I didn't feel this as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Dun, 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 dun. I didn't feel it that way. I felt it as me um, connecting soulfully with him, through him, bringing this music out on the instrument. And uh, there's nothing deeper than that uh, between a teacher and a student. Milford once told me that should I ever find myself in a religious drumming ceremony and I am asked to participate as a drummer that I should politely decline. Basically, it wasn't a jam. It's I don't know the rhythms and I would offend people if I was to play along. Well, actually that happened in Ghana when I was visiting there in 2000. There was a ceremony going on for day and night, <laughs> um, drumming going on constantly. And after a few days, my host invited me to come to the ceremony. And they asked if I wanted to sit in and play a drum. And I said, no, thank you. And so what they did is they sat me down in the middle of 20 drummers. And I got to feel the intense drumming and watch the dancing and people going into possession in front of me. And it was just the most amazing, amazing experience. Thank you, Milford, for that. My name is Matt Weston. Um, I'm a percussionist and composer. I studied with Milford Graves at uh, Bennington College from 1991 to 95. He had a tremendous impact on my life. Uh, my f one of my earliest exposures to this music was seeing a quartet of himself, Milford, uh, Charles Gale, Hugh Glover, and William Parker in concert. Um, it was absolutely overwhelming. It was one of those situations where you could feel that everything was different. Everything was different after that for me. I decided at that moment, it was a month after I got to Bennington, I decided at that moment, this is what I'm going to do. And I absolutely threw myself into uh, my studies with Milford. He taught me about independence, um, just from uh, in terms of limbs on the drum set. Uh, he taught me about tone, about vibration, um, and about a certain kind of, it's difficult to express, but basically understanding that music is always going to be more than music. Its impact is going to be far beyond the sound. He never wrote any patterns down for us. He played them for us. We had to learn them by listening and watching. Um, there is nothing that I have played since then that doesn't in some way relate to what I learned um, from Milford Graves. So that's what I'm devoted to, improvisational, spontaneous music. And I think that's what we need on the planet right now. I think people got to get more deep inside themselves because there's people, a lot of people who's got some 
there's people in general, we all have the potential to be smart, intelligent, and we got to bring it out of people. So it is possible to split yourself up. You know, this part is going to another part of here, this part's going to another part of here, but in the brain it's separating, it's controlling itself. You know, this don't tell this what to do, this don't tell that what to do, it does what it wants to do. Because that's what it's doing. And this is over here doing some place, oh, I'm, I can gain James, I walk. You know, what is that, what is that stuff over there, that, that, that free jazz stuff? So why are you keeping time over there? Because I want to keep time over there. And I want to be free over here. So don't tell me what to do. Hi, I'm Isla Abdul Rahim, formerly Rosalind Alexander. Um, I'm a student at, of Milford's at Bennington, but I know him more from being a neighbor in Jamaica, Queens, where he um, graciously treated me for an ailment that seemed impossible to treat by medical professionals on both coasts. And over the course of one summer, he completely cleared that problem up and I am forever grateful and I have tremendous respect for his um, music and medical abilities because they're the same, they're one and the same. And I was fortunate enough to spend that time with him in his healing environment and learn how to manage my own treatment and learn how to um, thrive under his care. And I, over the years, have sent countless people to him and everyone's come back with the same results. Everyone's come back just so grateful and so thankful and we're devastated at his loss, but the path he led us on, it was just tremendous. Um, there's not a moment in my life when I don't think about moments I spent with him at school or in his home. It's just, um, he became a friend of our family. He became a friend on just a neighbor. I mean, I would run into him and it was just always a joy to see him and to catch up and to have his advice because he always had something to tell me that was pertinent. And I still replay all of that from the last 40, 50 years it's in my head and it, it will not leave. And I hope I can pass that on to others, but um, I'm tremendously grateful and honored to have been in his company. And, um, you know, we're going to miss him, but, you know, God bless for what he's done. It's just, just amazing. I'm Scott Robinson of Science Sonic Laboratories here in Teaneck, New Jersey, and uh, was very honored uh, and amazed to have the great Milford Graves here at the laboratory for a recording session in 2015. I believe uh, that may have been his last studio album. Uh, the first time I heard Milford Graves, I was just a kid, and... Uh, it struck me immediately that he didn't sound like any other drummer. And over time, it, it became apparent to me that that's because he was not just a drummer. He was a, a force of nature, a kind of a conduit for some sort of crackling energy that would just shoot across the room. And the first chance I had to hear him play was, uh, was like sticking my finger in a light socket. You know, it, it felt... Um, not injurious in that way, but that level of energy in the room and entering my body. And I just said, you know, I want to be a part of this some kind of way. And it took me many years to, to finally get up the nerve to ask him to, to do a project with me. We'd spoken about it a few times. And uh, when we convened here, it was, uh, it was an unforgettable day with Roscoe Mitchell and Marshall Allen um Roscoe Mitchell had never played with Marshall or with Milford Graves so it was an historic meeting and we just played oh, one two three four five six that's the infinite heartbeat right four five six one two those could be four five four five six. <laughs> now if I do this like if I go like three, four, five, six, eight. That pata! So that be the, that's their favorite beat.
evening, everyone. My name is Tony LaRocco. I live in Rosedale, Queens, not too far from Professor Milford Graves. My relationship with him started when I was very young, actually when I was born. And uh, our lives, our paths crossed each other up until uh, his final days. So uh, one of my um, greatest memories of the professor uh, the, that last Thursday before he passed, um, I have received a text saying, uh, leave a, uh, a um, gentle message uh, to make him smile. So when I received the, set, the text, I said, uh, that don't make any sense. It don't make sense to me to make a phone call. I said, I might as well go on over there. So I went on over there and um, I was talking with his wife and um, then she said, uh, you can go in and speak to him. So I went in there and I said, how you doing, Professor? How you feel? So then what he did was he just motioned to his arm. He said, I said, what's the matter? It's stiff? You want, me to, you want me to massage it? He said, yeah, yeah, massage it. Okay. I said, no problem. So what I did was I started on an acupuncture point called uh, Triple Burner 15. So I worked on all the acupuncture points that he had taught me. I went all down the back all down the spine on an area called governor's channels. I worked all that area. I went all around the neck, worked that area, came down his arm and massaged that. And then I stopped and then I said, well, how does that feel? He said, yeah, 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 that feels good. I said, you want more? And then I saw his uh, right arm start to get so relaxed and start to go down. I said, how does that feel? He said, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, okay, all right. So. I tell you what, Professor, um, I'll be back on Saturday and uh, you just relax because uh, I don't want to wear you out. Too much company makes you tired. So you just relax. I'm glad I did this for you. And uh, I'll see you on Saturday. So he said, yeah, OK, that would be good. So I got up to leave and I told his wife, I said, he's real relaxed now and uh, I'll be back on Saturday. So uh, she said, OK, so I left. Then I got the phone call on Friday saying that he had passed. And then I was, I said, oh man. Then I said, well, at least I guess that was his way of saying goodbye to me by having me massage his arm. And that is a good feeling. That made me feel very warm. So I was glad to be there at that time. And like I said, we go way back from living in the 40 projects together since I was born. So that's my fondest memory of the professor. Hey, it's Derek Jordan, and thank you for joining us again today on the World Fusion Show. It's been great to have you for this part two in our celebration of Milford Graves. Um, please tell your friends about the show. Uh, let's keep this thing going. Subscribe on our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. and. Help us spread World Fusion all across the planet. Hey, I'd like to say a quick shout out to our sponsors, Mackenzie Family, Charitable Trust, Dean's Beans, uh, Ron Dans, Nancy Feinberg, Jeff Green, for your generous support. And remember, think globally, listen locally, and support independent music. <laughs>